So we'd like to isolate the homotopy-related parts of a model category. Here's one such construction. As we will show, this is the one that forces all the weak equivalences of the model category to turn into actual isomorphisms. So given a model category C, we write host C for the category whose objects um, are the objects of C, which are both fibrin and cofibrin, and whose morphisms are the homotopy classes of morphisms of C. Um, we showed last time that these are equivalence classes of morphisms, um, hence why we um, call them homotopy classes. The composition of two classes is the class of the composition of the representatives. Um, we call host C the homotopy category of the model category C. The only ambiguity that could make the definition above not well defined is our condition on composition. Is the composition of homotopy classes really the homotopy class of the composition of any two representatives? Well, yes, and to see this, let f be the representative of the homotopy class of a map from x to y. We want to show that given two maps, um, g and h, from y to z, if they are in the same homotopy class, then so is fg and fh. Again, all objects are assumed to be fibrant and cofibrant. Well, since the notions of right and left homotopy coincide, we can make the following diagram to exhibit the homotopy by assumption from G to H, and this exhibits the homotopy from FG to FH as well. This showed the case of pre-composition, but for post-composition we argue dually, drawing the diagram with left homotopy instead. So let's get back to what we said earlier, that the homotopy category is, one of, is the one which forces weak equivalences to become isomorphisms. Well, what is an isomorphism in the homotopy category? So intuitively, this would be homotopy equivalences, and we'll show that a little bit later. For now, we have this lemma, which is called the Whitehead theorem in model categories. If you recall, the topological Whitehead theorem said that a, white, uh, a weak equivalence between CW complex implied um, a homotopy equivalence. We mentioned briefly that CW complexes are both fibrant and cofibrant. So this lemma is upgrading the result to model categories. So how do we see this? Well, let's start with the weak equivalence. We can factor it as an acyclic cofibration followed by a fibration. But since it is a weak equivalence, by two out of three we can factor it as an acyclic cofibration followed by an acyclic fibration. Well, so this middle object Z is a fibrin cofibrin object as well, i.e. pre and post compose with the appropriate fibrations and cofibrations from X and Y. But okay, to show that the entire map is homotopy equivalence, since it factors as an acyclic cofibration followed by an acyclic fibration, it suffices to show that these maps are homotopy equivalences. So we'll show that acyclic fibrations between fiber and, fi between fiber and cofiber and objects are homotopy equivalences, and the case for acyclic cofibrations is just dual. Okay, so suppose f from x to y is an acyclic fibration between fiber and cofiber and objects. Then the following diagram lifts, and so it has a right inverse. How do we get the lift? Well, because of the map on the left, which is a cofibration since y is by assumption cofibrant, so it remains to show that this map is also left inverse up to homotopy, to left homotopy. So pick a cylinder object on x. Um, well, then we have this commuting square. The left map is a cofibration since cylinder objects factor the co-diagonal as a cofibration followed by an acyclic fibration. You might be wondering how on the top we have f inverse compose f if we only know f inverse is a right inverse of f, i.e. that f compose f inverse is the identity. Well, all we need is commutativity, and the previous diagram did at least give us that. But anyways, we have this diagram, which if you stare at it for a couple seconds, reveals the desired left homotopy between f inverse compose f in the identity. Okay, so this homotopy category wouldn't be super useful if we didn't have a way to move from the original model category to the corresponding homotopy category. So let's make a functor between these categories. On the level of objects, here's what it does. Pick an object x and c, consider the initial morphism. We can factor this as a cofibration followed by an acyclic fibration, of course. If x is fibrant, we requ further require that this second map is the identity on x. Intuitively think of how we could just set qx to x. Also consider the terminal morphism from x. We 
could again factor this as an acyclic co-fibration followed by a fibration. And again, we require the first map to be the identity on x if x was fibrant. Note that the choices of these intermediary objects are not at all canonical. They are, in fact, choices. But we'll eventually show that this doesn't um, ultimately come into play. So here's how we actually get an object in the homotopy category. This functor sends x to pqx. So apply the first object to the initial morphism to get qx, and apply the second to this qx to get pqx. Okay, what does this functor do to a morphism from x to y? Well, to do what I described, obtain qx and qy first, we have this diagram, and since the first morphism is a co-fibration and the second is an acyclic vibration by assumption, we have a lift from qx to qy. Then we just do this again um, after forming pqx and pqy. Okay, we definitely need to check that this functor is well defined. It's not at all clear that it is. So first of all, is pqx even a fibrant cofibrant co object? Just consider this diagram, and it's clear that um, it is pretty much directly from construction. So let's see now if the morphisms are well defined. First consider two lifts from earlier from qx to qy given a map from x to y. Then we have this diagram, which lifts and exhibits a left homotopy between these two lifts. So the top map is these two lifts. The other ambiguous one is the bottom map, which is just the map sil um, qx to qx given um, by the co-diagonal map, followed by the map from qx to x from the factorization of the um, initial morphism to x. And finally, followed by the map f from x to y. Well, qx and qy are co-fibrant by assumption, so they are also right homotopic to each other. Um, so post-composition of both of these maps with the map from qy to pqy are also right homotopic by a map, call it kappa. So now we'll apply p to this and get pqx and pqy. Suppose we have two lifts from pqx to pqy. Now we have this diagram which admits a lift. So these two maps are homotopic, and so PQF is well-defined, i.e. the functor is well-defined on morphisms. Well, does this functor represent composition? We can see this by looking at the diagram. You can rearrange this to convince yourself that PQG followed by PQF is a lift in the same, in the sense we were talking about when we showed morphisms were well-defined. Then by that same argument, it is homotopic to PQ of G compose F and we are done. We are finally ready to return to the claim made earlier that the homotopy category is one that forces weak equivalences to become isomorphisms. So here's a definition. Given a category with weak equivalences, its localization is another category and a functor to this new category from the original that sends weak equivalences to isomorphisms and is universal with this property. So for any other functor to another category D that sends weak equivalences to isomorphisms, that new functor will factor through gamma up to natural isomorphism. This factorization will be unique up to natural isomorphism. So in particular, given two maps F1 and F2 tilde, there is a unique natural isomorphism from F1 tilde to F2 tilde. So be careful it isn't guaranteed that a localization even exists. Also, the term localization can be more general, like given a subclass of morphisms K, then a localization at K sends morphisms to K to isomorphisms. Um, but for our purposes, we will say localization to mean a localization at the weak equivalences. So here's the theorem we've been alluding to. For a model category C, the homotopy category is indeed that localization of the underlying category with weak equivalences. This is exhibited by the functor gamma PQ, which is from before, e.g. the one that sends x to PQx. So let's prove this. So remember that isomorphisms in the homotopy category are homotopy equivalences. Um, we have this diagram from before, and we want to show that the right morphism is a homotopy equivalence if f is a weak homotopy equivalence. Well, by the Whitehead theorem for model categories, it suffices to show that this makes um, a weak equivalence, but this follows it by repeated application of 2 out of 3. So it remains to show universality. Well, let f be any functor that sends weak equivalences to isomorphisms, 
we need to show that it factors in the following way uniquely up to unique isomorphism, in the sense we just covered. Well, remember how we required gamma pq was the identity on fibrin cofibrin objects? So if a factorization f tilde even existed, which we're not claiming right now that it does, it must send images of maps between fibrin cofibrin objects under gamma to what f sends the map to. But the homotopy category has only fibrin cofibrin objects, and hence f is fixed up to unique natural isomorphism on the homotopy category. In particular, it sends maps between images in the homotopy category from the original category to what f would have sent pqf to. We use this fact later. The only thing left to show in the diagram is that there is a natural isomorphism row. f is a functor, so apply it to the commuting diagram from before. The morphisms, which were weak equivalences, are by assumption sent isomorphisms. So then just define rho for the choice of x to be the map from fx to fpqx on the top. So of course reversing that first morphism from fx to fqx, which we can do since it is an isomorphism. Hence we have this diagram which exhibits the desired natural isomorphism. Because it is an isomorphism and not just a homomorphism, we are done. If you've been paying attention, you might have observed that we've never resolved that um, forming PQ was a choice um, and not canonical. But with what we have just shown, we now know that it doesn't really matter. We can just speak of the functor, gamma, which we will call the localization functor, which is unique up to isomorphism. Um, this is a cool result of the model category structure. In general, the localization of a category of weak equivalences at its weak equivalences may force more morphisms than just weak equivalences to become isomorphisms. So when we formed the homotopy category, we had two steps, restrict to fibrin cofibrin objects and pass from morphisms to homotopy classes of morphisms. We can, however, talk about the full subcategory of fibrin to cofibrin and fibrin cofibrin objects. These can each be regarded as categories with weak equivalences via their weak equivalences inherited from the original model category C. Well, certainly these things inherit more than just the structure of a category with weak equivalences, considering that they come from a model category. The category of fibrin objects is said to have the structure of a fibration category, also called a brown category of fibrin objects. And the category of cofibrin objects is said to have the structure of a cofibration category. We will exploit these properties when we talk about homotopy fiber sequences. The idea intuitively by calling these fibration and cofibration categories is that each subcategory inherits quote unquote half of the factorization axioms of the overall model category. So by our previous theorem, a quick corollary is that the restriction of the localization functor to the subcategories of fibrin objects or cofibrin objects, um, or fibrin cofibrin objects for that matter, all exhibit the homotopy category of the original model category as the localization of the subcategories at their own respective weak equivalences. Now, if x is cofibrin and y is fibrin, then we have this neat result about the HOM set in the homotopy category of PQ and QI, or PX and QI. Um, it is in bijection with the HOM set in the original category modulo weak equivalences. So we want to show that this morphism is a bijection. So first break it up and factor it as so. Suppose the second map was an isomorphism. Now suppose we replace the middle x with Q, um, the middle x QI um, and suppose the new second map was an isomorphism. Then both of these facts combined would suggest that the overall map was a bijection in the first place. Okay, so we need to show that these two maps are isomorphisms. We prove one and the other is of course dual. To see that this map is surjective, consider that since x is cofibrin, there is a lift in the following diagram. So any morphism from x to y corresponds to a morphism from x to qy. To see that it is injective, Consider the following commutative diagram, which exhibits a homotopy of maps from x to qy to y. Then the fact that this diagram lift suggests that their corresponding maps from x to qy were homotopic already, and we are done. Our last result is this. 
Every commuting square in the homotopy category is in the image of the localization functor. So a priori it is guaranteed that there is a corresponding square in the original category that commutes up to homotopy. So that under the localization functor we get an actual commuting square. But the cool thing is there is actually a proper commuting square, i.e. not just up to homotopy in the original category. However, these might not necessarily have the same objects as we will see, but there will be a commuting square corresponding to each corresponding or each commuting square in the homotopy category, i.e. a representative. So let's prove this. Consider a commuting square in the homotopy category. So like I was saying, at the very least we have this diagram, which says that f compose b and a compose f prime commute up to homotopy. So the top square suggests we do the push out to the mapping cylinder, and um, which is something we'll cover in more detail later. And this gives us this factorization via universal properties. Um, it is a theorem that the induced map from the codomain to the mapping cylinder is a homotopy equivalence. So in the homotopy category where such maps become isomorphisms, F is given by the class for which the map A to cylinder A to cylinder F is a representative, to be precise. Um, it is also given, uh, it also gives us that the map from cylinder F to B prime is a representative for the original map B from Y to B prime. In other words, this is a commuting square in the original category that represents um, the original commuting square in the homotopy category.